Hey there. Today, we are talking about designing in After Effects instead of Photoshop. Hey there, and welcome to the Motion Science Video Podcast. My name is Cameron, and I just want to say thanks for being here today and watching this video and spending a few minutes with me as I talk to you about why I choose to design in After Effects versus Photoshop. Now, when I tell people I design in After Effects over Photoshop, I'll get a lot of, what? What do you mean? Like, no way. Like, that can't be possible. I'm like, yeah, it is. It's very possible, right? Um, I started designing in After Effects probably around 2009, 2010, um, when I was freelancing. I'd been freelancing for a few years. And what I found was... Um, I actually have three main reasons that I design After Effects versus Photoshop. Uh, the first reason is it's non-destructive like Photoshop. Now, Photoshop is getting some functions to it that um, make it not so destructive. But the second reason is, uh, but it's still not there in terms of After Effects. The second reason is plugins. There's a lot more plugins inside of After Effects versus Photoshop and plugins that come with it, uh, as well as plugins that are available to purchase for it. And the third reason is pretty simple. I don't have to move from Photoshop to After Effects. I'm already there, okay? So let me talk about the three reasons in a little bit more detail. The first one is non-destructive. So what I found was, in especially back in 09 and 10, when I was designing in Photoshop, or I was still in Photoshop and moving into After Effects, I found that I was constantly frustrated because I would have to duplicate layers inside of Photoshop uh, to apply effects to them, to cut things out, uh, to you know, just do my my typical workflow. I was constantly having to create an original file in Photoshop, duplicating that file, naming it something different, and then doing an effect, duplicating that, maybe applying another effect uh, or some type of um, painting to it, so that I always had originals a step back inside of Photoshop if I needed to go back. And, and a lot of times I would have to go back, right? I had to go back for myself if I was making a change, a creative change. If my clients saw something that they wanted changed, I had to go back and make the change. And I just found that it was kind of, it was really frustrating to me, okay? Because Photoshop had so many destructive features to it. Now, don't get me wrong, I still use Photoshop for certain tasks in designing. Um, those tasks mainly have to do with if I have to do very fine cutouts, I still like to go to Photoshop uh, to do those with the pen tool. I'm, I'm all about the pen tool, right? And that's just my old school ways. Um, there are some amazing ways to cut things out in Photoshop now, but I still, and I will use those, those magic tools and things like that, but I still find myself using the pen a lot. So if it comes to, to cutting things out with very fine detail, I will go back to Photoshop, export export those to After Effects. Also, if I have to do painting, I will find myself in Photoshop. Now, I don't do a whole lot of painting uh, for the work that I personally do or have done, so that's not a huge reason. But anything other than that, than those two reasons I can think of off the top of my head, I'm gonna be in After Effects. Now, when I started designing in After Effects in 09, 010, and 10, uh, the studios I was working for at the time were actually surprised by it because um, what would happen was I was designing a lot of style frames for production teams. And if my designs were picked, at that point, how the process kind of worked was if my style frames were picked, I had to package up those Photoshop files, those frames, all of the assets and send them off to the production team where they would then take them, tear them apart, bring them in After Effects and start animating and make changes and things like that. When I started packaging up After Effects project files for my chosen style frames and sending those off to these teams, these high level motion houses, they were actually kind of surprised. They're like, wow, this is, this is awesome. Like everything is already lined up in After Effects. It saves us a whole lot of time versus taking everything from Photoshop bringing in After Effects and, and recreating things in After Effects. So I was saving these teams a lot of time. Also, there was jobs where I was the one who designed and then it was animating. So I saved myself a ton of time because like 
for my personal workflow, especially back then, I was doing a whole lot of two and a half D and 3D work inside of After Effects. And, you know, it, I found it easier for instead of having to mimic 3D separation inside of Photoshop, flat 3D separation, why not just go into After Effects, set up my scene, set up my camera, everything is where I need it to be. It's just a single still frame. And I'm saving myself a whole lot of time that if it gets chosen, it's it's ready to animate. It's already prepped to go, right? And I also found that I could create, I had a lot more possibilities on, this is before Photoshop had a 3D viewpoint viewport to it. Um, and I'm not a Photoshop master by any means. And in fact, I use it less and less and less, like I said. So there's some new features have been added to it since. But just the fact that I could take my layers and layer things up inside of After Effects and, and add a camera and just get the exact view that I wanted to see of my design was, I mean, it was priceless, right? It was it saved me so much time. On top of that, um, I found that when I did, like designed a lot of style frames, I was using a lot of plugins at the end to really bring my work to life. Now that's what I call the polish. Now, before I was designing in After Effects, I was layering everything up in Photoshop and then I would send all these Photoshop files to After Effects. And then in After Effects, I'd apply like my glows or my different effects or things like that, depending on what the project was. Um, and so it was just, it was, again, it was just extra steps that weren't necessary. So it's like, why can't, I've always said that, and I think other people say this too, that you know, After Effects is Photoshop on steroids because it is, right? It's just, it's Photoshop in, it's After Effects is Photoshop in motion. Now, Photoshop, again, is adding features, like they're adding timelines now. So you can start doing simple animations inside of Photoshop. I, was, I would stick with After Effects 100% of the time, but it just saves so much time in After Effects. Plus it's non-destructive, which was my initial point. Uh, it's non-destructive, so I can apply effects to my layers. I can um, easily control alpha and track mats and, um, whatever the case may be for the particular project I'm designing, it's non-destructive. I'm not creating duplicate upon duplicate of layers just to try out effects to see if they work, right? Because it's non-destructive. And then uh, the third point of, I don't have to move from Photoshop to After Effects. I'm already there. And I've talked about this. So uh, in terms of time, saving time, going from design to, animation, you're already there. You're halfway there already. So it just, it saves so much time. And, you know, After Effects has most of the, a lot of the same tools that Photoshop has. Um, it doesn't have the painting tools, which is again, why I moved to Photoshop for painting. Um, but designing in After Effects also made me just an overall better motion designer. So even if you're not a designer, Laying, layering images and, and compositions together in After Effects and just seeing how things work together when I'm designing, that's what helped build this artistic eye that I developed over time. Because any of you that know me, know, you know, like you know that I did not go to art school. I did, I've never taken an art class in my entire life. Everything was, was taught from trial and error and from just getting in there and doing it, right? The, the first day I was asked to design a style frame, um, I was already a freelancer at this point, and the production company was in a, a pinch, and they said, can you design a set of style frames for us? And it was for a huge uh, cellular company at the time, and I panicked, right? I'm like, I've no, you want me to design something? Well, obviously the creative director for the company, he, recognized that I had a creative eye based on the animation work I had done for them. And he trusted me enough. And I was up front with him. I said, Hey man, I've never designed. I don't know if I can do this. And he, you know, he really pushed me. He's like, I, I believe in you. I know you can do this. And he actually gave me that confidence to just try it. So I designed these style frames and, um, you know, delivered them to the client. They were ecstatic. They picked my designs to go with great. Um, but like I said, it's it's layering up these elements inside of After Effects and just getting this, this eye for what works visually, what doesn't, what looks good, what colors work well together, what typefaces work, you know, all of these things together. That's what taught me to be a better motion designer. So I would suggest 
you don't all have to do this. If you're a power user in Photoshop, stick with Photoshop. I mean, you can design amazing style frames. But if you're a little bit timid with Photoshop and you want to explore After Effects even more, get in there and design inside of After Effects. So just to plug one of my um, curriculums that I teach, it's called StyleCraft. In StyleCraft, I actually teach you how to design inside of After Effects. So that's one of the main things I teach. So that's what I got for you today. I would love to uh, hear from you in the comments if you are designing an After Effects, what's your take on that? Because I know more and more motion designers are moving towards designing an After Effects. Until next time, I'm Cameron, and this is Motion Science. See ya.